Hi everyone, David here with a impromptu demonstration of the new Reflex G-Series macro lenses. I'm down on the floor to give you a look at what you can do with the lenses. There's not much flora and fauna around at this time of year. It's winter in the UK. So I'm doing my best. I've got some props. I'm going to fire up my screen recording and show you what's going on. So here we are in the Reflex Pro camera app. This is my little prop that I got from an artisan store a couple of days ago. And I'm in the one times lens, the main camera. This is the lens that the two macro lenses actually attach to. So speaking of those macro lenses, we've got a long range and a short range. I'll show you the differences between them and compare them to the iPhone's built-in macro lens, which is the ultra wide. And this is a 15 Pro Max, by the way. So this is as close as we can get. If we pay attention to this MF over here, we can see this is as close as we can get with the iPhone's built-in main camera, which in fairness is, is pretty close actually. And we can take a cute photo of the, my dream house. And as we get closer, you'll see why it's my dream house in a minute. So let's switch over to the ultra wide lens, which is the macro lens, and try and get an interesting shot with the macro lens. You can see here we've got Rosie and Jim in my dream house, which is a little house by the water with a thatched roof, a little tree here, and around the back there's like a little balcony and stuff. It's, it's a dream, it really is. So let's see what's going on here with Rosie and Jim, and I'm going to turn on the, press the eye or tap the eye up here to get manual focus, not manual focus, focus peaking. This is manual focus, MF. So I can check that I'm in focus. But the ultra wide macro lens actually has a lot in focus throughout the frame, which is fine. It's, it's an impressive lens. And it is limited to 12 megapixels. And if I actually come out of the reflex camera app and go into Apple's built in camera app, I can use the one times lens. Can you see that? Even though it says one times lens though, I'm still in the ultra wide. So it's limited to 12 megapixels and it's gonna upscale with AI. Okay, so if I capture that now, let me show you the Reflex G-Series macro lenses to compare. This is the long range macro lens. And I'm going to get out of the stock camera app, go into the Reflex app, so I can use manual focus, which you can't do in the stock camera app. And one of the benefits of this lens straight away is you get a lot more resolution. I've got 48 megapixels now. So if I try and get a shot of Rosie here, underneath these water droplets, as she's going to the boat, and then there's Jim in the background. I can actually show you with manual focus the two different characters, or I'll, I, I can try to anyway. As I can, this is the closest it'll go. Here's the furthest away. Yeah, so there's Jim, and there's Rosie. Really, really cool stuff. So let's. I think I liked the hor uh, the the vertical. Did I like the vertical? Yeah, that's nice. So let me try and get that in focus. I'm in Hive. Usually I'd be in my favoured RAW, Bayer RAW, but not today. For purposes of demonstration, I'm going to stay in Hive. And try and get that in focus as, as best as I can. If it's not, if I miss the focus, it's it's not on the on the lenses. It's just me not being able to see properly. I love using the 15 Pro Max because it has such a big bright screen. Any missing of focus is purely down to me. No excuses really. I can shoot in 12 megapixels as well, show you the difference. Get a few different shots. I'll come around here, get a shot of the, 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 the tree. It's a very unusual scene because we've got a little tiny tree amidst all the grass. What is going on here? I wonder. It makes me want to shoot some miniatures. You know when they shoot miniatures for films? 
really really cool stuff so can I get a shot of Jim from the boat I've just ruined my little water droplets but not to worry they're they're drying anyway okay so that's a long range macro the long range macro let's just stay a little bit further away and get some more context in the scene you know so we can see what's going on the short range macro on the other hand is the tool you use when you want to get as close as possible and fill the frame with your subjects so let's whack it on and see what the difference is so I'm gonna to go to my closest focusing distance which is zero and let's try on this little water droplet here oh no there we go a few minutes ago these were full of water now I've been talking so long I've lost them I've got a few so I think the closest focus distance is not appropriate for the shot so I'm gonna to go to one there we are, and I still need to get a bit closer. I wish you could see just how close I actually am here. There's maybe two centimeters between me, my my lens, and Rosie here. It's ridiculous. I'm just trying to make sure that Rosie's in focus, and if I go horizontal again, just like that I wonder where they're going on their boat today <laughs> let's try that tree shot with the one that's really close yeah so you can see I wouldn't get the tree with the the one that's really close the close range macro because it needs more context that tree is just that be a really random photo if it was just the tree by itself and I hope that that has given you some idea as to the differences and the capabilities of these two different lenses and throughout this demonstration my phone has been increasingly gathering all sorts of bits of mud and I've chipped the paint where I've tried to photograph rocks and stuff but I've had these lenses since July they're still going strong they've been in they were in the sea a bit yesterday they've got still got sand embedded in them in places they're absolutely fine and I love macro photography it forces me to slow down as I said I've been here for ages I'm just trying to I've been here for that long the water's evaporated from the grass <laughs> just trying to get a nice photo whereas Usually I'm rushing around trying to get a nice photo, whereas with macro, I can slow down, I can take my time, I can see what works, I can really think about my composition. Just the fact that it's macro doesn't mean that it's automatically a decent shot. And I like that you start to think about your composition, except now you're using blades of grass as leading lines instead of roads and curbs and things like that. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. And I'm gonna get up off the floor now. See ya.